Welcome back to Seed Time and Harvest. Today we're at Sister Jennifer's house. We're gonna help her get a raised bed in. of a garden bed that she had she had some pineapples and some beaver grass but we're gonna move those we're gonna change the location of her garden this is the jennifer how did you hear about us well one sabbath evening just before sunset i was flipping through the channels and i was on youtube and i saw where um safe to serve came up and i noticed um they were talking about making your home garden or you know making preparations to leave the city and um i noticed in the backyard there was someone that i probably knew which i did and then i spoke with her after the program and she um gave me your number and we made a contact from there wonderful and today we're gonna help you get your raised bed in how excited are you to have your garden again very excited but the only problem is to make sure that I maintain it. Right, right, right. So it's a little bit of an investment and time is the biggest investment for any garden for it to be successful. All right, so we're gonna get right into it. Okay. What are you guys doing? We're going to do um, some of it. We're removing some of the mint from the garden area. I'm going to put the garden right beside the fence and we don't want this mint in it so it's overgrown so we're taking out some of it. it smells good though. Do you have any garbage bags at all? You can break these up. Yeah, I do. We were able to cut out over 80% of this dried um, mint in Cersei. It smells really good though, but see it's all a lot of dried branches, so we had to get rid of those to give the plants the opportunity to start back fresh. It will be a lot healthier. So it's already started to spring back, so it's gonna be more vibrant coming up. So can you tell me why did you choose this location in regards to, with, to the on the other stuff? side? Mm -hmm. Okay, so with where be, because the sun rises on that side mm -hmm. towards the east, mm -hmm. and then it goes directly over the house. So with this part right here, you'll get mostly sunlight. If oh. we put it on the other side by the fence, it's gonna get a lot of shade, oh, okay. and the plants do better in full sun. And we pull the bed away from the wall over here so that you have space to walk around the bed because it's a four foot bed, it's really wide. Um, so if it was on the wall, it was on the fence, then it would be really difficult for you to reach over to the back and either weed or harvest. So because it's now you can walk around it, you have that space to walk around it, it will be a lot easier. And can you tell us what you're doing, Jose? So right now I'm bracing the, the wood with these brackets here. And the reason why we do that is because it actually will give you a better hold. So it's better than nailing the wood directly. Right. And I'll probably just put two screws there and that'll be enough. Okay. Oh, 
We're gonna do this all around. <laughs> so because this wood is so shallow and it's a lot of sand underneath, so we're gonna take out some of the dirt and fill it up so that the plants have more good dirt um, mm -hmm. below, further below. So we're gonna do that now. We dug out some of the, the sand that was in the bed so that we can have enough room for the roots to grow deep as we put in the soil. So we dug that out, cleaned out the weeds, and we're just gonna put in some cardboard to prevent any extra weeds <coughs> from trying to come up. And again, we put the garden here. This is the north side. This fence is the north side south. And when the sun rises, it's gonna get full sun right here. So it, get, it should start getting sun around 10 a.m. Yeah. Down here. Okay. Now, Cerise, why are we wetting this? So it's best to wet the cardboard before so that it starts to break down and it starts to kill the dirt, the grass that's underneath. And someone commented that this is actually good food for worms. Right, and it will break down and feed the plants too. All right, we already added the compost. Now we're gonna add in some topsoil and then we're gonna put the perlite in and some fertilizer and get that all mixed in. All right, so what do you got in there now, Sharice? We got compost. We have some um, hummus blend. We have topsoil. Oh, oops, sorry, and perlite. Can you just remind us what each one of these uh, soil types is good for in amendments? Well, the compost is going to have all the nutrients that your plants need. And then the hummus or the, it's almost like a peat moss will help us keep the soil loose. Helps also with moisture retention. And the perlite is a soil conditioner, keeps the soil loose as well. And the topsoil just balances everything. We're just going to level it out. Here's a blend of fertilizer that I've made. It has rock phosphate, kelp meal, alfalfa meal. It has C90 in it, as well as green sand. I'm gonna add this to the garden also. It smells really strong, so you wanna wear a mask. The C90 has a strong smell. I'm sorry, the kelp. And then we're going to work it in. So tell me, how often do I have to water these plants? You water the plants preferably early in the morning, especially, you know, since it gets really hot here. Um, in the morning, because you want the plants to be able to have that moisture so that during the hottest time of the day they don't get stressed all right so preferably in the morning for about 30 minutes um just if you have a sprinkler just let the sprinkler run or if you're not able to water in the morning water it late in the evening however when you water in the evening you want to water it so that the plants get time to dry before the night falls because like for tomatoes and squash if it gets Overnight, if water stays on the leaf overnight, you can get mold on the plants or mildew. Then poke your finger in. If the top inch of the soil is wet, then you don't have to water. Because sometimes the sun is hot, sometimes it's not so hot. So you, I mean, looking alone won't tell that it needs water, but sometimes you can feel it. Say, you know, below it's dry, so let me add water. And then if it's moist, then you don't need to add water. Also, Sister Jennifer, if you don't, if you don't have time to sit, stand out here and just water by hand, you can get an end sprinkler to the end of your hose and just turn on the water 
and then walk away and then come back like in an hour or so. That's what I know. What about when it rains? Oh no, you don't have to water if it rains for about 24 hours. You don't want too much water. Everything in moderation. everything good in moderation. That's temperance. The plants can die from being overwatered too. 